Hello and welcome back to another episode. We've got a bigger journey ahead of us now. We unfortunately were potentially sabotaged, or maybe it was an accident, but we were heading through an underground minecart system, going to the first slings, and, well, now we're having to go on foot. Here we go. Boindil strikes up song during your hike. A short while later, Bavrigor joins in. But rather than actually singing along, he tries to outdo Boindil with his own songs. When he finally strikes up a love song, Boindil becomes absolutely livid. You take the stonemason to one side and ask him if he's doing it on purpose. Of course I'm doing it on purpose. I'm gonna make him suffer the whole journey. Can't go on like this. We can't fight amongst ourselves and save Girdlegard. You take a short break before you dare breach the roots of the problem. It's to do with a woman, right? Not in the way you might think. Smeralda was my sister, a young thing of only 40 cycles. Bavrigor takes a large swig of his liquor before he continues. She was almost as belligerent as Boindil, and she got it into her blockhead to stand by him in battle. A bad decision. You can see the pain he is suffering in his eyes. You place a hand on his shoulder and put him under no pressure to carry on. Yeah, here we go. The constant bickering between Boindil and Bavrigor distracts you. Goimgar hears the clanking of armor first. Something's coming! Before you know it, the orcs are charging towards you over a hillside. Oh, lovely. It's gonna be a big orc horde. If my goal is to get away from them, I wonder which character would be better to bring. Bavrigor, you're a warrior, kind of. Well, a stone mason, you're mighty. Gomgar, disagreeable, passive, nobody likes Gomgar. He automatically attracts enemies. <laughs> Incredible. Okay. I think I'm going to bring him. A bit strange, right? But he's got abilities that can lure my foes away. I love it. I can choose three abilities total. Okay. Then I'll take that. Now, we can begin. We've got to run, though. Oh, I didn't bring Gomgar. Darn it. My bad. I would meant to bring him. Can I go around somehow? If I can go around, that would be better. I'm thinking maybe I can, but if I head right through them, I'm going to be in big trouble. That is a lot of them. If we keep on moving, maybe we can get away in time. Come on. We've got to go. I'm not taking the direct pathway. That would be a terrible idea. Bone deal's so quick. Okay, they're beginning to catch up to me. Not a fan of that. Alright, here's where things get pretty bad. Now we gotta fight for a little bit. So here's what we'll do. Bavrigor, you might be the weak link, so we gotta watch out. I'm gonna have you use your cleave. You're mighty as well, my friend, but you need to move. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and hit them. And you, well, you can attract piggy sounds. He loves saying that a lot. He gets rather mad. I mean, I get why he hates them. I get it. We all should hate them. They're all terrible. Whoa! They're all terrible creatures. Okay, if I can get you through, that would be ideal. Okay. Come on, come on, run. Right through. Bavrigor, you too. They are pretty nasty, aren't they? We just need to get over to the ledge over here. Not the ledge, but the pathway. What is it? I need you to jump right through, my friend. That way, when we fight, we fight over here all together. All right, we made it. That worked out. It was not easy, but it worked out. Let's kill them all quickly if we can. We have got to hurry. Okay, you're gone. Nearly through. Yeah, that'll be great for him as a tank. Yeah, you can't do it yet. I get it. He doesn't have a two-handed weapon. I wonder if I could change that in the future. I don't know. Well, yeah, with keen fire, maybe. I don't know. It's probably a two-handed weapon, I would imagine. Alright, there's only one left. And we made it. That could have been quite difficult, but we made it. Ah, 
That was refreshing. Hey, here comes some more. Three, four, five, five or six. Five or six? Oh, phew. He means five or six hundred. Goimgar turns white as a sheet. That's too many. To the city. Come on. Way too many. Okay, we leveled up. Whoa, that is a lot of gold. We need that and a golden ring. Huh, things are written inside of it. Weird. Wonder what it could be. <laughs> you flee towards Mifidania with Goimgar out ahead. The orcs at his back seem to immobilize unimagined powers in him, and he reaches the gate first, hammering manically against it. He says something and scurries through a small gateway that has been opened to him. Moments later, you also reach the gate. Get in, quickly! You push your way through the gate as the first orc arrows slam into the wood next to you. Now we're popping in. The other dwarf said we should bolt the gate behind him, but we could use all the help we can get when the orcs come. That treacherous sissy! Where is he? Boendal and I will look for him. Boindiel and Bavragor, help the city guards in any way you can. You were certain the two of them wouldn't be much help in the search for Goingar. Great, I've got to find him now. I hate that guy. Now, he would have been very handy for luring away the orcs. I mean, that was my bad. It worked out anyway. Let's go look around. I am glad that the children of Vrakus are here. <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? The man tries to give off an air of normality, but he occasionally glances nervously over to the city wall. Do you have food? Yeah, I need all that food. Talisman of Steady Battle. That's pretty good. Talisman of Healing. Talisman of Attack. That would do even more damage. These are all very good, actually. Hold on. We can have two of those. 250. Those are mine. I'm keeping that. What more do I have? Oh, yeah. Nothing special. Get out. I thought I had more things to sell or trade, but apparently not. Yeah, that will belong to you. That might be good for Boendil. He's very quick. I'm thinking about it right now. 40%. This is the biggest human city I've ever seen. After Parista. You haven't chosen a very good time to take a look at Mifidania, sir. And I don't just mean because of the orcs outside our gates. The winter is only just now retreating into the mountains. In a couple of weeks, it will be spring, and the city will burst into bloom. The man glances at the city wall once again. At least, I hope it will. Have you heard any news from other lands? Nodon is rampaging through the land with his orcs and the Alpha. The Magi are all dead, and no one has heard any more of the host that moved against Porista. These are dark times, but I think it's important that we don't despair. We must trust in the gods. We have to. You would have liked to have told the trader that, as well as trusting in the gods, he should also wish you and your companions luck. But that would have just led to more questions. Farewell, okay. and good luck. I liked him a lot. I really enjoy the characters in here. I'm telling you, I'm at a point now where I'm not about open world games as much anymore. I mean, it's open world in a way, right? But you have a strong driving plot that drives you. And I love that rather than just having, you know, a bunch of arbitrary characters. All of the gates are bolted shut. The city seems to be secure, at least for the moment. Locked gates also mean, of course, that you can't get out. Right. Do we want to right now? Are they going to keep me here? I want to look around at everything if I can. Anything I can find would be grand. The fabulous Rodario. Cometh, dear spectators, cometh and see! 
Let the theater curiosum, with its star actor, the fabulous Rodario, the mysterious Nomora, and the genius Magister Technicus, Fergas, carry you off to another world. Now see and hear, dear spectators, the truth about Nudin the Knowledge Lusty, who disposed of the other Magi in a most horrifying way and plunged Girdlegard into disaster. <laughs> Girdlegard, it will be mine. Before you know it, you are overcome with hatred for those who destroyed your home and killed your loved ones. By Fracas, I'm going to kill you! You might try to. And I will take great pleasure in your attempt. Who shall I pick out next, hmm? Who amongst your traveling companions means the most to you? You don't want to take part in the Alf's game and keep your lips tightly sealed while you consider your means of escape. What do you want with my rucksack? If you're looking for provisions, you could have just asked me nicely. I'm not interested in what's in the rucksack. I only know that the Lord of the Perish Land wants it. So he will have it. Your master doesn't tell you much by the sounds of it. Either he doesn't trust you, or he's in the habit of not talking about his business with servants. You feel the blade cutting into your skin, and you take it as a sign of a small victory. Ah, this way! What, what is that, an elf? If we're quick, we'll get that long ear yet! Alarm! Alarm! The orcs are attacking! Come, we must defend the walls. Okay, go on, go. You'll not be handy for that. So we go now. Destroy all ladders. Let's go ahead and pop up. Bowendale, I'm gonna send you over to a different area. Yes, yes. Over here. I'm with you. They don't have a lot of guards, do they? I thought they would have a bit more. Nope. Apparently not. Are the ladders up yet? Okay, they're shooting down. Yes, yes. Oh boy. Of course. Come here, you. Get it now. Hmm? We're over here. It's correct. Right. That one. There's another one over yes. here. Tongue deal. You'll get that one. And then yes. you, my friend, need to pop up too. We got another one over here. Oh man. Fortunately, getting them is not really that difficult. One gone. Look at the orc now. What is it? Now that we're over here, let's go after that other ladder. Gone. Your turn. Another one gone. Alright, Bow and Dill. Did you get yours? Not quite. We need to get it now, though. We want them gone. Attract them to you. Replenish yourself. You're now in a rage. What a shame. Hey, right, guard, do you want to come help out? You don't just want to stare. Another one gone. Beautiful. Okay, Tongue Dill, you have your own thing going on. And we're down over here. I think we got a majority of them. Yeah. Only two slipped past me. It's really not bad, all things considered. I knew if Bavagor had, I don't know, combatant armor. If you're going to travel with me, you better be traveling. But we did well. We got him quickly. Very good. We're able to stop them. Simple us. You wish it weren't so. But it is clear to you now that the city can no longer be saved. To the side gate. It's our only chance. Yes. Really? No. I don't want to let these people die. Now I have to go. Okay. Hold on. I've got to reach over here. What is it? Yes, yes. We're gonna have you leap down. Yeah, I wish it wasn't so. That's such a major location. They had so few guards. Come on, get down, get down. Quickly now. Who's not down there? Bavagor? No. Bowen doll. Okay. You're not down. Come on down. Come on down. We knocked him down. Maybe that saved his life even. I don't know. 
and knock down even more of them. Let's get another one. Come on. Those poor guards, man. They can't hold on. And we've got to leave. It's locked. We have to open it somehow. Perhaps we can be of service, gentlemen. Step aside. Are you thieves? Certainly not. We are artists. People with extraordinary talents. Say, friends, as you clearly mean to leave Lifadania too, would you have anything against us joining you? The fabulous Redaria. Oh, an admirer of my skills? Who would have thought it? I am indeed the one and only fabulous Rodario. This worthy gentleman here is Fergus, the best Magister Technicus since human thought. And last but not least, the enchanting Namora, whose beauty makes the mayor's roses wither in envy. Uh, perhaps we should discuss the rest when we are out of this mess. I like them. We have a long and dangerous journey ahead of us. I don't think you really want to join us. An epic and dangerous journey? That sounds like an adventure. And anyway, I have already seen that you know how to handle those weapons of yours. In these dangerous times, a big travel group offers the best protection, don't you think? I don't know. I can... The orcs are still surging through the gate and over the wall. You decide that this isn't the right time for discussions. All right, then. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We'll be safe with the Firstlings. The Firstlings. The splendor of their halls is said to be unrivaled. And I have heard they have fascinating contraptions, Fergus, that are almost reminiscent of magic. It's okay. Let's go. Yeah, let's get the hell out. I feel bad for these people, man. What a major location being destroyed like that. Whoa! They end up giving you a huge party. Check that out. Fergus didn't talk. But they're pretty cool. I like their little crew. A lot of variety to it. Okay. Cleave. You get might. All right. A lot of gold, provisions, and a golden ring. I'm going to need even more food. I'm glad I bought all that food. Yeah, I bought all that food. <laughs> I had to. In the evening after your escape from Iphidania, you recover from your exertions around a campfire. Goimgar withdraws to a solitary corner. Bavrigor devotes himself to his alcohol, and the twins get their smelly dwarf cheese out. Nemora and Fergus exchange hugs and kisses on the other side of the fire, while Rodario sits next to you. Ah, a journey with real dwarves to the stronghold of the Firstlings. I'm sure I can write that into my new piece. We're far enough away from Mephidania. Perhaps we should part ways tomorrow morning. Rodario jumps up and begins to gesticulate ostentatiously. I think you have underestimated us. Let me introduce myself and my colleagues once more. I am the Fabulous. We don't have time to look after a pack of jesters. Rodario seems offended for a moment, but then he grins, turns away from the group, and raises his right arm. A jet of flame shoots out of his sleeve. The dwarves are startled and amazed by the brief spectacle. <laughs> and what do you say now, critical Mr. Dwarf? <laughs> You're a magus. I don't particularly like them either. At the Curious, magic is my area of responsibility. There is a tube under his arm with a flint and a bag full of Lycopedia seeds. When he firmly presses the bag, the flint sprays sparks and the seeds shoot out. And there you have it. Magic fire. B -b -b Masterly work, Fergus! The Magister Technicus shows his appreciation with a nod of his head. If they all have tricks like this up their sleeves, well, they might not be such a burden after all, Tungnil. How are you doing for provisions? We don't have enough. We are happy to share what we have. It isn't very much, though. We had to leave most of it behind. Food is sure to be a problem on our journey. Winter's only just beginning to leave, Wayan, and people will be keeping a tight grip on the stocks they do have because of the orc attacks. 
We have to be frugal and organize as much food as we can. It wouldn't be much of a heroic story if we starved on the way to the firstlings. I must congratulate you on your skills. I find it hard to believe that it's not achieved by magic. Aha, thank you, but I assure you it has nothing to do with magic. Just alchemy and accomplished acting. We leave the sorcery to the magi. Don't mention them. There's no love lost to Andakai and her walking iron tower. You've met Andakai the Tempestuous? That is unbelievable. How was she? She ran away to the Outer Lands. A damn disgrace. Adakai had her reasons to leave us. She had already fought against Nodon and was unsuccessful. Furthermore, we wouldn't be here without her, and she told us about Keenfire. Andokai, the bringer of hope. I like that. I'll have to use that in my new piece. True to his words, Rodario takes out his notebook and writes something down. Do you know anything about the Firstlings? If I recall the map correctly, we need to cross the first large mountains in the Red Range and then pass through Snowdale to East Ironhald Stronghold. No one has seen the Firstlings for hundreds of cycles, but there are many stories about them. Their craftsmanship is much vaunted, and there used to be trade via a narrow path that led into the mountains. But I don't think there is a man living now who has ever walked that road. Our mission is to forge the legendary axe Keenfire and destroy the traitor Nodon. If you wish to accompany us through hunger, coldness, and danger, then do so. It's your decision. How could we not partake in such a story? Just think, what a wonderful play we could make of it! If we survive. I was hoping to only resurface once we reach the Red Range. Instead, we have a long journey and a dangerous climb ahead of us. Hmm. There may be another way apart from the old trading route. A few years ago, an old man from the north told me of a place called Wackenstein. Apparently, there is an old path there, older than the dwarven tunnels themselves. Legends and stories. There's too much uncertainty. Let's just see what the next few days bring. I really like the campaign map overview, like what we have here. It provides a sense of, I don't know, a real journey. There's an orc horde up there. And a new ring. No injuries. Good. Oh, it's beginning to move now. I don't have a lot of you food. You are walking past an inconspicuous copse as Nomura suddenly stops on the spot. Wait. We are not alone. Someone is watching us. A trap? Is it that Alf again? He's annoying me. I like how he's able to kidnap me in the middle of a crowd. Die, that feels scum! weird. What are you doing? Why are you attacking us? We're dwarves too. We're on the same side. I see honest dwarves here, but they are accompanied by scum. I will free you of it. Oh, really? And what are you going to do on your own against eight? You come here. What? <laughs> Brother, what what are you doing? Boindil, Boindil, what's wrong? Come to your senses. It's no use. They belong to me. Now die, Scott. What Scott. the hell? Okay. We have who we can have, unfortunately. What do you have? Swift. Okay. Shadow step. We can go after her. What do you have? Poison dart. Shrill. Orcs and dogs, really. That's really funny. Very cool. To the knee. Who then falls down. <laughs> and burning dart. Might ignite the target. You don't need that. My bad, but you definitely don't need that right now. You can have that, my friend. And now we get to begin. Okay, so here we go, Fergus. I'm gonna have you go after these two. Mm. Bavragor, we need to head on he up and go after. Long. Actually, go after him. Yeah. You're very quick. 
And I need you to head over here. Huh? I'm just gonna move over here too. Let's move now. I don't need anyone getting killed right now. Okay, what more can I do to the knee? I'll be ready again soon. Just a second, still charging. I'm on my way. Okay, let's move. Hold on. Yeah. We're not done yet. Yes, on my way. I need to go get her. Yeah. I knocked her down you. really far. That's really hey, funny. Friends, Crap. You're doing a lot of damage Before. to me. Lavagor, you're getting your head kicked in. Okay, let's go over here and go after her. We got her once. Okay. Now I need to head over here and get her again. Are they okay now? They should be. No sooner does the unknown dwarf fall unconscious to the floor than her control over your comrades disappears. You fet her and gag her until you know more about her sinister powers. That was, uh, <clears throat> I hope I didn't hurt you, scholar. It was as if in a dream, but at the same time, it wasn't. I heard her voice in my head, and although I knew better, I only saw orcs attacking me. You were... The enemy. Boindil goes over to the shackled dwarf and kicks her gently with his boot. This is never a child of the smith, even if she looks like one. Those gifts. By fracas, there is something evil at work. You kneel in front of the dwarf and press your axe against her throat. My name is Tungdil. If I remove your gag, will you answer some questions? The captive nods, and you pull the gag out of her mouth. Geralda is my name. It would seem I underestimated you. Your powers, I've never heard of anything like it. Neither have I. I haven't had them for long. When I try to remember, all I see is black mist and I taste iron and mud and there's an elf who... Oh. <sighs> Did the elf give you these powers? When I try to remember, it hurts. Like needles sticking into my head. I am Geralda Bloodstone. I am... I was... Oh. <laughs> Where have you come from and what brings you to Wayan? I was on my way to the Free Folk. They are said to live in the middle of Girdelgard, without kingdoms or their laws. The Free Folk? You mean dwarves? Yes. Dwarfs who have left their kingdoms, voluntarily or otherwise. Not everyone has a place in their kingdom. You instinctively think of your own plight. You are not a secondling, and won't be welcome among the fourthlings since you placed obstacles in their king's path. Don't believe this nonsense, scholar. The free folk are just a fairy tale that people tell themselves when they don't want to stick to the traditions. Just look what good has done Geralda. Geralda prepares to reply. But then she holds back. You said something about scum when you attacked us. Has Namora done anything to harm you? Not her, but her kind. Alpha. She is a human. She only acts at being an elf in theater. In the theater? For the first time, Geralda looks at Namora without a hateful expression. She... she must die. Enough talk! She is dangerous, probably crazy. She attacked us, we should put an end to her. It's what you call amnesia, memory loss, a tool often used in stage productions. We don't know what happened to her, and maybe she doesn't either. We can't just kill her. She's too dangerous just to let go, so well, we'll take her with us. Remove the fetters. You nip any objection in the bud, and turn to Geralda. Listen, don't know what has happened to you, but we are dwarves and we shouldn't fight against one another. We could do with your help. The female dwarf seems just as surprised by your decision as your companions. I... thank you. I would be happy to accompany you. I am Geralda Bloodstone, of the Fourthling Kingdom. I'm sorry that I attacked you. It was a misunderstanding. You realize that your decision doesn't please everyone. 
Boindil and Namora seem particularly upset, but they hold back and you continue on your way, a slightly gloomy mood hanging over the group. I get it, I get it. I'll be kind for now. Curious about her powers. I need to learn more about that. Okay. Bloody scissors. Whoa. Whirlwind. Kind of like that. I'll take that one. What about you? Earthquake? Stunned? Or Dragon's Breath? Huh. I'll give you Earthquake. And then for you, Leader's Will. More damage? Or Battle Rush? We'll take Leader's Will. A little bit more food and a golden ring again. We'll head over here. When you enter the pretty little village with its richly ornate houses and its temple to Palandiel at its center, you can see an angry mob some distance away. The villagers are hassling a young woman, insulting her and pushing her to the ground. A man dressed richly confronts the woman. Have you no shame robbing a temple of Palandiel? The crowd cheers and many vociferously demand that the woman be hanged. You could have helped us, but you didn't. Is that in the spirit of Palandiel? You step out of the crowd and confront the priest. What evidence do you have against this woman? We found the granary broken into. Almost a third of our grain and a significant amount of supplies have gone. And all this just one day after she and her people were snooping around here. That isn't proof. It could simply be coincidence. Anyway, why would a thief come back to the scene of a crime? The priest eyes you in silence, while some of the villagers make it clear that dwarves should keep their noses out of their business. Tell us what happened. The villagers grumble, but the priest gives the woman a chance to defend herself. My name is Tavia. I was forced to flee Tabai Inn with my family when the parish land began to spread. My husband, he... We had to leave him behind. The horror in the woman's eyes gives you a good idea as to what became of her husband. No one accepted us in the north. There are too many refugees and everyone is scared. Queen Wei has offered land in Wei and to anyone who will work hard for it. But what should we grow if no one will sell us grain? We offered a fair price, but Father Mallon... She darts a scathing gaze at the priest. He wanted double the amount. The priest glances briefly at the angry villagers. Then he replies in a firm voice. It was a hard winter. And with the increasing frequency of orc attacks, we must think of ourselves first and foremost. Even we cannot help everyone. The bystanders mutter in agreement. The accusations are serious, so let's get to the bottom of the matter to be completely sure. We have no doubt that she did it. The priest looks at the villagers standing around him, the lust for blood written in their faces. On the other hand, before we do something we can't undo... Dissatisfied murmuring grows, which the priest debates with mollifying gestures. Search for your evidence. You there, lock this woman up in the guardhouse in the meantime. The woman is taken into a squat building made of rough blocks of stone. The crowd slowly disbands. The priest is lost in thoughts, standing in front of the temple as if he couldn't decide whether to go in or not. I was wondering, what was here first, the temple or the village? Ah, a keen eye. The temple is indeed much too big for such a small village. It was built on the foundations of an old stronghold when salt was found nearby. The village has grown over the years in the shadow of the temple. Good people live here. Honest and pious children of Pilandiel. He glances at the place where the woman was surrounded. Why can't we just be left in peace? Supposing Tavia really did steal the grain and supplies, but only to save her family. Would you turn a blind eye? Pilandiel teaches generosity. But that, too, must have its boundaries. We cannot help everyone. At some point, there won't be enough for us. So, 
If you had sold the grain, the people of Seaton would have starved. Maybe not. Not yet. But if we always give everything we have away... No one is saying always, and no one is saying everything. The priest shrugs his shoulders apologetically. He doesn't wish to spoil things with his flock. You nod goodbye, and the priest returns the gesture. You enter the village's large storehouse. The ground floor of the two-story building is full of turnips, with large barrels and clay pots on the floor and on high shelves. Several villagers are carrying out stock-taking. They're being supervised by a weedy man who observes them with a grim expression and writes things on a wax tablet every now and then. Work is in full swing. The man with the wax tablet grumbles now and then in agreement when one of the peasants shouts out a number to him. It shouldn't take too much longer until they finish the inventory. There are sacks piled up on top of one another on the first floor. They are most likely filled with different kinds of grain and, judging by the omnipresent white dust, flour. You walk towards the only area in the storeroom where you can see the floorboards. You hesitate as your boots slip on the floor, as if you're walking on mud. The Magister Technicus carefully observes the roof beams above the empty corner. He grabs at a beam and crumbles something between his fingers. You can't make out what it is, so you copy him and feel damp, rotten wood. It's very easy to pull away small pieces. What are you doing here? The man with the wax tablet is standing on the stairs. He sounds half angry, half shocked. No one is allowed in here. Who are you? And what are you doing here if no one is allowed to be here? I'm allowed to be here. It's my job. I'm the steward of the temple. Morris is my name. The rain has gotten here. The roof and the floor are damp. Those savages! It wasn't enough that they steal from us. They had to damage the roof, too. That was probably where they got in. The wood didn't start to rot yesterday, good man. The steward's face turns bright red. And you are the experts on such things, are you? Assuming the roof here has been leaky for a long time, what would have happened to the grain in the sacks directly underneath? Wouldn't it have turned rotten? The man wets his lips. His gaze darts around the room. The roof was fine. I'll have it repaired. And now, get out of here! The steward angrily blocks off all further attempts at talking to him. And even when you threaten him with Father Malin, it doesn't have the desired effect. The father trusts in him, he says and he's always been a devout follower. The heavy door of the storehouse closes behind you, and you hear a bolt sliding into place from the inside. The priest is lost in thoughts, standing in front of the temple, as if he couldn't decide whether to go... The roof of the granary is leaky. We saw some rotten wooden planks. Again? Morris only had the roof repaired last summer. Did he? If he didn't... Some of the grain would have got damp and rotten. Out of the question, Morris would have reported that. He checks the grain once a month and there were no complaints. The priest has absolutely no doubt in what he is saying, often a sign that someone hasn't thought things over. You nod goodbye and the priest returns the gesture. You enter the guardhouse and before the guards know, Boindil and Boendal have caught them up in a friendly conversation. Shielded from the view of the guards, you exchange a few words with the suspect without being disturbed. Where have you taken the grain and supplies? I don't know anything about grain or supplies. Apart from the fact that we could do with both, I'm telling you, I am innocent! Why did you come back to the village? I wanted to negotiate with Father Malin for the grain. What else could I do? No sooner had I arrived than they surrounded me and accused me of robbery. We won't let anyone do anything to you, but if we are going to help you, you will have to tell us the truth. The woman looks you in the face, then her head sinks, and when she looks back up, she has tears in her eyes. Please, I just want to go back to my family. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> Tongue deal. You feel sympathy towards the woman. 
You raise your hand to silence Rodario and nod to the woman to continue talking. We asked for grain and were full of hope when we saw the well-filled granary. We hadn't reckoned on the malice of the people here. A slow, ironic clap sounds from behind you. Confused, you turn around to face Rodario. Bravo, my dear, with tears and everything. Tough luck that a master of the art of acting is present. None of what she said corresponds with the truth, Tangil. She is lying and trying to deceive us. Not completely talentless for an amateur. You expect the woman to deny everything. But when she overcomes her amazement, she spits in the actor's face. <laughs> and what if I am? I would do it all again. The people here have more than they need and my people are starving. Is that fair? Spit it out. Where are the spoils and your people? I'd rather die than tell you that. The woman looks at you determinedly and neither of you blink. Why did you come back here after stealing the grain and supplies? We didn't steal them. We paid for them. A reasonable price, just not to further Malin. You had help. He promised us three dozen sacks of grain. When we opened the sacks in our hideout, we realized that most of the grain was rotten. He thought he'd get away with it. The woman looks around wearily. And by the looks of things, he has. Morris the steward offered you the grain, didn't he? What does that matter? I've no proof it was him. And even if I did, if I admit that we have the stuff, I'll be hanging from a tree by this evening and my children will starve. I beg you, let me go. We bought the grain and the supplies. Perhaps, perhaps he wasn't allowed to sell it to us. But we paid. And with a little seed we can sow, at least some of us have a chance of surviving the year. You've stolen, no matter how you put it. But perhaps Father Malin will show clemency if you return the grain. Clemency for me and a death sentence for my family. Never. Disenchanted by the cause the discussion has taken, you shake your head and leave the guardhouse. Here's the big thing here, okay. The village has got to feed people, right? They will not have extra grain. Apparently Morris really messed up and they had rotted grain. He tried to cheat him of that and he should be in trouble for that. The priest is lost in thoughts, standing in front of the temple as if he couldn't decide whether to go in or not. Oh, they nod goodbye and the okay. priest returns the gesture. Thought maybe I'd be able to handle it right then. What, can I not handle it? Huh. That's interesting. I thought I'd be able to at least... Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna head back You spend quick. the night protected from the wind in a ruin, and are sitting around a campfire as the topic of your new companion's performance on the stage comes up. Sleight of hand, speed, alchemy, and makeup can have an incredible effect. Namora transformed herself into an elf using the latter. I also noticed your weapons, Namora. i would never seen such swords before. Their names are Crescent and Sunbeam. I designed them myself. It took a long time until I found a smith who was able to make them. She looks like a pointy ear too. Nature hasn't been kind to her. For this absent-minded remark, Boindil receives evil looks from Nomura and grins from the men. Perhaps I really am an elf and will bring you a nightmare in your sleep tonight. Don't be surprised if you wake up screaming. For a moment, it seems as though she has merged with the darkness. But when you blink, everything is back to normal. By the gods, isn't she magnificent in her role? There is no denying what Rodario says. Let's go over here again, you hold on. To the priest. You nod yeah. goodbye. Huh, okay, I can't seem to do anything else with that. That's really unfortunate. I didn't get to handle it like I wanted to. Oh well. The that might not be intentional. Isn't overly friendly towards Geralda, and this evening she's sitting once again apart from the others. You ask yourself what you can do to break the ice when you see that she has a file in her hand. The file is wrapped around with silver wire and has a snap lock. The liquid in it is black. Geralda opens the lid and takes a big swig. As she puts down the bottle, 
A smile flits across her face, followed by a short expression of deep satisfaction. It is the first time that you have seen a positive emotion on the face of the sombre dwarf. Is that medicine? No, it's... I don't know either. If I don't drink it, I have a longing for it. It gets stronger and stronger until it... until I can't stand it anymore. When I drink it, the longing disappears and I feel rested and strong. And when the file's empty? I don't know. I don't know where I got the drink from, let alone what it is. But if I don't drink it, frackers give me strength. I think I would go crazy or die. Geralda plays with the file, lost in her thoughts, as if she were trying to remember where she saw it for the first time. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, when we're back, we'll keep on continuing our journey. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, and there will be more content. Until then.